On the opening day, which was 28th March 2008, the package handling system failed and almost 300 flights in and out of Heathrow Airport were cancelled during the first five days and affecting more than 30,000 passengers, precisely 36,000 plus passengers on 13 March 2008. But after two decades of planning and a budget of four and a half billion pounds, as that weary traveller just told Paul Davis, it simply doesn't work properly. Heathrow's Terminal 5 have endured a second day of serious disruption and face further chaos this weekend. Airways admits that even after six months of training, its staff just couldn't get to grips with the new state-of-the-art automated system. So what had happened to as per the standard project success measure, Heathrow Airport Terminal 5 project was completed on time, on budget and as per the scope. But on the very opening date, it's disaster. So welcome everyone. Today we are going to fly out to Heathrow Airport in London, England to talk about Terminal 5 and what happened on its opening day. It gives me great pleasure to open Terminal 5 this 21st century gateway to Britain. So are you ready? Let's begin. So let's first understand why build a new terminal in the first place. Well, the British Airways had three primary needs. The first, they wanted to maintain their ranking as the number one airport in the Europe. Second, they wanted to improve the scalability as the air travel is expected to double by 2027. And the third, they wanted to make the advantage of, economic, of economics of the scale. The planning, designing and the construction and preparing Terminal 5 was an enormous and the risky undertaking that spanned almost 26 years. Both the British Airways, that is the National Airlines of the United Kingdom and the British Airport Authority, the organization that is responsible for operating the Heathrow Airport, played a primary role in the project. But the, despite of the size and the project scale, inherent risk, both the parties involved were able to deliver it on time and on budget. What is the vision and objective with that they started the project? The vision of the project was to transform the Hatro into world's greatest airport. British Airways aimed to move all of their operations under the newly constructed Terminal 5 to lower the cost and improve the customer's experience via economies of scale. As air travel was expected to double by 2027, British Airways expected to increase the passenger capacity from 55 million to 19 million per year while having an approximate 12,000 packs per hour. The project execution, how it executed, Heathrow Terminal 5 was one of the Europe's largest construction project in terms of the cost, the scale and the construction required along with the complexity in the design and the construction coordination were enormous. As a result, managing a project of this size required careful, extensive planning. The project was divided into four major phases, each spanning different periods of a time and each overlap each other in the execution. So let's discuss one by one. The first phase that is the plan. The planning phase lasted between 1986 to 2001, almost 14 years. It included four years public inquiry, only four public inquiry, the longest in the British history to hear comments and concerns resulting in 700 conditions being imposed on the project including the requirement of, for archaeologists to excavate the site prior to the construction. The planning process itself cost 63 million pounds. Let's focus on the second, that is the design phase. The design phase began in 1989 
and lasted until 2004. The design was based on the concept developed by Roger Street Harbour and Partners, consisting of a terminal building that would become Britain's largest freestanding structure on site over 260 hectares. The design phase incorporate condition resulting from the public inquiry, including the diversion of the Longford River and the Duke of North Northumberland River, along with the security features resulting from the new realities following by 9-11 attack. So they add all those concerns and the risk in that design. The construction phase, the construction of uh, British Airport uh, Authority was responsible for managing the project and took the unusual position of assuming all risk, realizing the contractors from their typical accountability via the T5 agreement. That is something which is amazing. This prevent a culture of blame or litigation and encourage good collaboration between all the contractors and the suppliers. British Airport Authority also employed a software system named Project Flow, which employed just-in-time process to coordinate the delivery of material to the construction site. Construction involved over 60 contractors with 16 major projects and 147 sub-projects. Construction process completed on schedule on budget for most of the part. However, a number of minor construction delay prevented the availability of many parts of the terminal to staff involved into the operational readiness phase. Now, apart in the construction, the construction of the package handling system is also part of that, that was managed by Vanderland Industries. And they are using the system component that had already been proven in numbers of airport worldwide. So that is already proven practices and best practices they are following. The software for the system was developed by IBM. Overall, the construction phase of was a big success and operational readiness began in September 2007. Now operation readiness that is a post phase and that something in order to prepare for ongoing operation of terminal 5 and its opening day, British Airport Authority and British Airways prepared a comprehensive operational readiness program lasting for 6 months which include training for the terminal personnel, extensive testing of the baggage handling system. Over 15,000 public volunteers were involved in testing various parts of the terminal. After putting all these efforts and the hard work, once it was established, the terminal file miserably failed. The baggage handling personnel let the required train to operate the new system and that there was not enough person to handle the high influx of the passengers entering the new terminal. Some of aggravating factors were as dull as employees arriving for the work unable to find their way to the staff car park, delay in getting staff to security screening and the staff familiarization with the system was not that. We had shared the detailed analysis and the uh, diagram as you see over here that from for your further investigation study. The road signs were apparently not clear outside the terminal and the people said they were given a wrong direction once inside. All the check-in desks were apparently closed when the first passengers started to arrive and from there it went from bad to worse as the cumulative effect of technical and the management mistake led to about 23,205 bags going missing the first weekend and the number of planes leaving without luggage. You just realize that if you miss that luggage and this is the huge number. In contrast to that, the Beijing Terminal 3 which was 3 times the size of the Terminal 5 and built in the half of the time for the half of the cost opened on 26 March 2008 without a flow. Analysts say that it opened smoothly because the airport authorities understood how to orchestrate such large 
complex undertaking that involved hundreds of people. Terminal 5 manages tested technical system using a simulation at stake only one reason. With 2,000 more passengers a few weeks before the terminal was due to open, these more passengers had to wear that hard wear helmets or hats because the construction was not finished and therefore not all systems could be tested in real life. On the other side, the basic terminal 3 rehearsal started two months before opening at a time when the construction was completed. Managers organizing three rehearsals from a few thousand to eight thousands at the end of February. A week later, six, six airlines started using the terminal 3 on a trial basis so that when the terminal opened at end of the March, very few problems arose. So that is the terminal 3 the comparison between uh, Beijing and Heathrow. In this testimony of the British House of Common Union shop steward Iggy Wade said that workers raised the concern with the management about the system. Management response was to involve process and engineers and all decisions were made by people who would never operate the system. The people who would actually operate the system were completely ignored. According to Wade, people were taken to the hotels and show some sort of films, slides and told this was what it looked like. They were then given familiarization training for three days to cover an area big as Hyde Park. Two days out of the three were devoted to putting them into coach to show them X, Y and Z and where to enter and exit and so on. But what was missing was hands-on training that was not sufficient at all. In summary, after discussing both the case studies, so who is to blame or maybe more appropriately is anybody to blame or is rather our, our project culture that is to blame. So called modern project management has tried to separate project from the operations and giving responsibility for a business objective to the sponsor. It has focused on the very short term parameters that can be measured at the conclusion of the project such as time, cost and the scope that is the added criteria. With the project management being used more and more with program for complex and more strategic endeavor, measures of the success should be addressed long term organization outcomes. Terminal 5 is an example of this kind of misguided success evolution where the project deemed successful by modern project standards but in fact it's a failed program. So hope you understood this case study.